before clicking away, remember that we all started somewhere and we all started with the basics. However, as we progress, we always tend to forget the basics and it's always good to review the basics of what we know and what we don't know. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna be showing you guys what a variable is and all the different types of variables. If you've already explored the concept of a variable in Godot, then you already know that we can already set this by saying var and then a word. Now, we're going to be exploring the different types of variables in just a second, but let's kind of vis visualize this by creating a circle around the variable and connecting it to different types. So here we have very int into variable. So an int is a type of variable that we'll be exploring in a second in, in the specifics. Next, we have float. We also have strings. We have booleans and we have arrays. And lastly, my favorite dictionaries. All right, so let's explore each one specifically. So here in our diagram, you can see that each of these are a type of variable, right? Now, an int is essentially a number. We should all already know what a number is. Now, this is a real number if you want to be more mathematical. So it's a whole number. It can't be point something. It's one, zero, five, two, three in this case, right? So hopefully that kind of explains what an int is. It's, it's just a number. Now, next up we have floats. Floats are, are pretty much numbers, but now this is where the decimals come in. So if we want to specify a decimal, a float is what we would use. So 1.0, 0.0, or 0. 0.0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So all those things, a decimal is a float. Next up, we have strings. String is, is essentially a word on our keyboard. Now, these the word in a string can usually be denoted by either the double bracket or the single bracket. Now, we can also put numbers inside of a string. So a string can, doesn't have to contain words as in letters. It can also contain uh, numbers, right? So we can have numbers inside of that string. All right, hopefully that kind of explains what a string is. And now we have Boolean. Boolean is actually really simple. It's just true or false. It's a true or false statement, essentially. So either we have true or we have false, and that's it. Now I'll explore, we will explore a little bit more on how to do this in Godot in a second, but let's keep going. The next two, we're gonna have arrays and dictionaries. Now, arrays are a little simpler than dictionaries, but we'll do our best to explain it. So first we have an array of numbers. So here we'll, we'll be holding three numbers inside of essentially a bucket. Now each of these buckets or this bucket can hold a certain position or a certain number of positions. Now each of these positions can hold any sort of array or a variable. So an array is essentially a collection of variables. Now inside that array you can have any any other type of, of variable including booleans, strings, ints, or floats. So here you can see I put strings and, and integers inside my array. Now you can also have an array inside of an array. Now this is known as a 2D array. What you see above here though, in our example, is a one dimensional array, a 1D array, okay? Now we can reference a specific position in the array by saying array at position zero. Now this will point essentially to our first number in our, for in our array. So it'll give us zero in this case. Now if I want to reference the number two in this array, I would reference array two. Now we'll explore a bit more in Godot, but this is the general idea of an array. Next up, we got dictionaries. Dictionaries are a little more complex than arrays, but they're pretty similar concept. So a dictionary is essentially almost like an array that has two different things. So it has a key and it has a value. So the key is how we can reference that value or what's inside of that key, okay? So the terminology specifically is key and value. Now, if I want to reference the number one, the value one in this case, I would say dick or dictionary and put the string zero. Now the string zero is the key. So no matter what I put the key as, that is the reference I must use. Okay. So if I were to put a one or an integer instead, then that's what I would put in there instead. Now, if it's a full word like name, then I would reference name instead. Okay. Now, if I want to kind of generalize this, what I would have in a full dictionary is a variable as a key and a variable inside of that as the reference to that 
key, if that makes sense. So here we have variable, and then inside of that, we'll have another type of variable. Now, the first variable on the left will be the actual key, and then the variable on the right will be the value of that key. Now, similarly to an array, we can actually store things inside of the variables. We can store dictionaries inside of the variables. So we can have an array or a variable as a pointer I'm almost or a key and then have a, another dictionary inside of that uh, inside of that key right and then we can kind of have a two-dimensional dictionary and then similarly we can put an array we can put any sort of variable we want so hopefully that kind of clears up what a dictionary is but let's explore this a bit more in Godot so let's get right into it okay so let's explore the concept of variable. So first, in order to specify a variable in Godot, all we have to do is say var. Now we can give it a word, so we'll give it thing. And then we'll say equal, and then we specify the type. Now the type in Godot is just when I set it. So let's create a ready function, a function ready. And inside of this, we'll just print thing. So we'll be able to test what sort of int or variable this is. Now when I play, it'll just print number the number one. Now this is an integer, okay? Now if I wanted to, I can put this inside of a string and it'll print me the same thing, but it, it is not the same thing. So it printed one, but it's a string, right? It's completely different. Now in Godot, we can actually convert this into an integer. We can say int thing, and we're gonna have to close it like that. And so now when I Play. It's the same thing, but again, we've converted it from a string to an integer. Now, there's a lot of different things that we can convert from. So I could convert from a, an integer to a string, etc. So there's a lot of different things I can do. Okay, next up, let's explore a float. So float is the same thing, but it's just 0.0, .0 for example. So let's try not converting it first and let's say thing, print thing. It'll give me zero because when I print zero, it's not going to be able to understand that this is a float. So let's try adding a 0 0.01 and now it'll print 0 0.01. So let's actually try to convert this to an int and see what it gives me. And it'll round it down to zero. So there's a lot of different things in Godot that we can do like round, etc. So there's a lot of different mathematical functions in Godot that are built in. Okay, so now we have float. What about Boolean? Well, Boolean is just true or false, right? So we can print true by saying true or we can print false. Now if I print this, it should print false. Now what happens if I convert it from a boolean to an int? Try to take a guess. It'll actually print zero. If you are familiar with the concept of true and false, true usually represents one and false represents zero. So if I print thing when it's true and convert it to an integer, it'll print one. Now this is really common because in our actual computer, this is how the computer reads code, right? Zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, right? So that's the idea. Now, what else do we have? We have an array. So let's make an array. So we have an array. We'll give it a few numbers, zero, one, two. Now, if I want to ref print the array, let's print the array first and see what I get. Now it'll print the entire array. Now, what if I want to reference a specific number here? Let's say the number one. Well, I would say the number one. Right, so here it'll print me number one only. Now, if I were to give this a word or a string, I'll say one, this would print the number one or uh, the string one. There we go. So there's our string. So that is how you reference objects or uh, variables inside of an array. Now, lastly, we have a dictionary. This is the fun one. Now, in order to visualize this properly, I like to organize it like this. So obviously you can do it all in one line like this and then have a number as a key. Well, has it? well, I usually put a number as a key. So an int as a key, and then I'll put like a string. So a string. Now this is a nice dictionary or this is a dictionary, but I don't like it organized like this. I tend to organize my dictionaries like this. And then if I have another key, I'll put one and then say string one. Now in order to print this, let's print just thing and see what we get. Now it'll print the entire dictionary. Now, if I want to reference string one, right? So I can't just print the number one, this guy, I have to print the value of the key. So let's say I want to print the value of key one, I would just say one. Let's print this and see what I get. So it'll print string one. Now, the fun part. Now, this isn't an array, remember? So the key doesn't have to be a number. The key can be a string. So I can say, um, let's try to organize this in the way of a um, 
in inventory. So generally speaking, in an inventory, we'll have things like name of the item. We'll also have count, right? So in our count, let's say our count is the amount of number of things in our item, right? So we have potion. So let's print potion as the name and the count will be 10, right? So here, let's try printing thing one. Let's, I want you to try to think what's going to happen. Try to think before, before I press play, what's going to happen? When I press play, it's going to error. Why? Because this is, tr we're trying to pass through a key through thing, but that key does not exist. So the key that I must pass through is count or name, right? It depends on which one I want. But in this case, we'll do count and it'll give me 10. Or if I want potion, the name, I'll, whoops, let's just type this out. We'll say thing and name, and it'll print the name. Now. Let's say I have a dictionary inside of a dictionary. How would I do that? Well, well, let's say I have a key and then what I can do is I can put another dictionary inside that key. Now here I can say name. Yeah, let's copy this actually. Now this is a dictionary inside of a dictionary, right? So let's see if this errors. Okay, cool. Now, what does this look like? Well, first in order to reference, let's say the potion, Right, all we would do is we can say, let's print thing zero, right? This will print this dictionary. So let's play and it'll print that dictionary that we have, that item essentially. If we have an item, that's the item that we print. Now, what if I want to reference the potion or the count? Well, I would just pass through another key, right? So here we would say count and then play. It'll reference me 10, right? So that's the value that I referenced. Now, again, you can, make another dictionary, right? So you can have a dictionary inside of a dictionary inside of a dictionary. So let's make another one. Let's say name 10 or something. And then in here, we'll say name. So we have three parts. This is a three dimensional dictionary. Now, I don't know why you would do this, but you can. So you can keep going. You can have a dictionary inside of a dictionary inside of a dictionary. And similarly in an array, you can do the same thing. So we could also have an array here. So this would make it an array. Now. That is it. So that is the idea of a di of all the variables. Hopefully this video has been useful and I will see you guys next time. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, go subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of more tutorials on my channel um, for Godot and hopefully more coming soon. So if you guys did, definitely go subscribe and go like and share and comment on this video. If you also would like to support me, I have some Udemy courses that you should definitely check out. They'll be in the link down below that you can click on. And I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Um, it's totally up to you, but um, I will always be on YouTube kind of giving you guys content. So don't worry too much about that. Um, but it, it is great, greatly appreciated. I also do have some other links down below, um, including my Discord and Twitch. Sometimes I all stream games and stuff. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.